Hey, what's up? This is Christopher. So this is going to be the second video in my Final Cut Pro 10 Basics for Beginners. And in this video, I'm going to show you some basic editing techniques just to help you get started. Now, this video is for absolute beginners. So if you have any experience with Final Cut Pro 10, this is not the video for you. Go ahead and hit that pause button and look for another video. All right, so in the first video, I showed you how to import media into your uh, events that are in your library. If you have not watched that video, I will put a link in the description if you want to check it out. So I'm going to kind of pick up where that video left off. And I'm in my library here, my Criso. I have my event, my Criso.net. And then I have my projects here. We had the Final Cut Pro 10 for beginners. So I'm just going to double click that. And then down here, I have my clips. And this is all my audio, all my video files, audio files, uh, still images that I have imported. Choose, pick and choose what you want to use for your video file. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use this drone footage right here from the Mavic Pro. And in order to get this footage into my timeline, I can click on it. And you'll notice that it has this yellow bounding box around the entire clip. I can just click and drag it's going to put that entire video clip into my timeline and then I can start editing I can go ahead and uh, let's say I want to start the footage here so I can tap M on my keyboard and that'll put a marker there to let me know that's where I want it to begin and then I can scrub and find an out point let's just say right here so I will hit M again and now I have an end point and an out point now if I want to cut out the beginning here and the end here that I'm not going to use Right here, I have the drop down with the selection tool, and I'll just come to blade, and then I'll move it right on that marker point. You'll notice that when I put the blade on there, it just snaps into place. I hit B, and then I come over here and tap B again, and go ahead and cut that. Then I'll come back up here, grab my selection tool, and I will click on the portion that I don't need and hit delete. And then I'll come over here and select on the end portion that I don't need and tap delete. Now you'll notice I have deleted that marker, and I have this other marker here that's still on my timeline. So I can go ahead and double click that and hit delete. Now the reason why I add the markers before I delete is because sometimes I don't make all my cuts at, you know, while I'm looking at the video. So I'll go ahead and use the markers by tapping M on the keyboard to mark points where I want to make edits at or whatever. Because I may decide later on, I'm like, oh, I don't want to cut that footage out or whatever. You know, once I have all the clips imported into my timeline, I'll kind of pick and choose where I want to start or begin at. So um, the keyboard shortcuts for the blade is B on your keyboard. And you'll notice here that it changed to the razor blade icon. Or I could tap A and it goes back to the selection or the select tool. And then you have like trim, position, range, select, zoom, or hand. And you'll notice over here on the right, it's showing you the keyboard shortcuts to that. Get a custom to using them and you'll start editing more efficiently. Now, if I want to add audio to my track, you'll notice that my video file clip here is blue. So I have some music right here and I can just go ahead and drag this down to my timeline. You'll notice that it's green. So the audio clip is a lot longer than my video file. So I'm just going to move my playhead here. You'll notice that it snaps yellow and tap B on my keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and cut. Make sure you cut on the video file, not the video file. And then A, you can just select that and then delete. So now my audio matches the length of my video file. Now, really quick, put the playhead at the beginning here. This is the playhead, this little thing that I'm moving and has the handle on it. And when I scrub, you'll notice that I have this little red line on my timeline. So over here, you have your skim tool. So this turns on the video skimmer. So if I toggle it off, now it doesn't have that little... Um, skimming line anymore. Now the only way I can move to where I want to make cuts is by dragging on the playhead. So I leave that on. And then you have the audio skimmer. Now you'll notice a minute ago when I put them on, put a marker right here, and you'll notice that it snapped right to it. So this icon right here is your snapping, and it will snap anything that you click on, you know, like a point of interest, like where the marker is, it will automatically snap to that. So always make sure you have the skimming for the video and then the uh, snapping turned on. Now, if you want to adjust the height and the length of your files, you have this little film strip icon right here. You can click on this, 
and you can choose what kind of info you want to display. You have some different options in here. And this is subjective, so you can choose what looks good to you. You know, I like to leave it right here. And then, of course, you can make it taller. And you'll notice how that gets really big. And uh, leave that about halfway. And then you can make it longer, too, which is really useful for your audio. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Make that about like so. Let's make it a little bit longer and a little bit taller there. Make it a little bit longer. And you'll notice right here on the audio, there's a big gap right here where there's no audio that would be playing. So I can go ahead and tap B and go ahead and make my cut there and then just delete this and then just drag that to the beginning of the timeline. Then my audio, you know, would start with the video file. You can actually fine tune that to make it start exactly. Um, with your video file. All right, so up here at the top next to your library, let me just close that down. You'll notice that you have two icons here. One is for still images or audio. So if you have music in iTunes that you have downloaded to your computer that you want to use in your file, you could click and drag that to your timeline. Uh, you have some garage band sounds, uh, different sound effects. You, know, you have to download all these um, to your machine, but you'll notice that you have a ton of uh, pre-installed sound effects that come with Final Cut Pro 10. Um, you also have your generators and your titles. So you notice you have all these different titles in here and you can drag like, let's just go with a basic 3D. So I'll just click on this and drag it to my timeline. All right, so you'll notice now that it says basic 3D and it has like this awesome little intro and kind of just fades out. It like bursts in and then fades out. Now if you want to edit that, you just click on the title, you notice it has a yellow bounding box, and then come up here to your inspector. You'll want to click on that and make sure it's purple. It looks like the three toggles right there. And then you could edit the text. So I can just come here and then just type in put my website right there. I can change the font so I can have some cool fonts here. Whatever you have installed on your Mac is what will show up in this list. So if you have custom fonts and you have them installed, they will show up. Let's just go with something like that. And then I can change like uh, light or medium, you know, for the weight. I can change the size. Click on that and make it like really big. Um, I can align it like to the left, center, right. I can do vertical alignment if I want it dead center. Just click on that or if I want to, you know, change the um, alignment of it. You can do line spacing, uh, tracking, baseline, all caps. Uh, 3D text, you can change the depth of it. Or 3D, you notice there it gets a little bit fatter when I uh, enlarge that or whatever. Um, you know, you pick whatever you choose. You can change the depth direction of 3D text. You can change the materials of the 3D text by dropping down. One cool one, you come up here to miscellaneous. One that I like is the soap bubbles. Click that and it'll change. And uh, look how awesome that looks or whatever. Of course, it's all subjective. You can pick and choose what you want. You could add glow to it. And then make sure if you click on glow, you don't know what kind of glow you want just tap on show and then of course you can change these I can change it to like a green glow I change the opacity the blur amount uh, the radius of it I want to make the radius really large um, if you notice there you got like really really green or whatever um, so up here at the top you'll notice you have some different uh, options to choose you have show title inspector so these right here, you can change the animation style of the pre-built uh, basic 3D text. So I can do zoom or drop in, slide left, right. Uh, you can change the speed uh, in. You can ease in or ease out or accelerate, decelerate, um, retime, build out, etc. And that's just the animation like you'll see right here when it, when it bounces in. You can change all the different aspects of these uh, text that come installed with Final Cut Pro 10. And then you can click on right here, the uh, video inspector. Now this is cool if you want to change the position, you have your X, Y axis. So I can go ahead and move this to the left. And then if I want to say up or down, you know, kind of move it down here to the bottom. And uh, looks really cool right there. And then I can scale it. I want to make it like super huge. Now the scaling does not affect the text size. It's different. The text size actually adjust the size of the text. The scaling is how large it appears on your project or whatever. So I bet you couldn't see anything but just the O or whatever. So you get the basic idea of that. And then you have the scale and X, Y, and then the anchor. You can crop it if you want to crop it. Um, and then you can distort things. 
Um, I'm not going to get into all that. You just have to play around with it. And uh, you can fit this, you can fill it, you know, you can change all the different aspects of the video file. And then you have your information toggle here. Uh, this is a video role as a title, uh, audio role if you want to change the roles of whatever you're working on. This is where you would do so. And then you can name it uh, Crizzo.net Basic 3D. But uh, that's adding text to your projects. All right, then we have some generators here. I'll show you a little bit about the generators. So let's see generators are let's say if I want to add an intro to my video and I kind of like let's go with what looks cool how about the clouds here since we've got drone footage so I'm gonna click that and drag it to the beginning of my timeline and I'm gonna cut on one that long so I want to say five seconds say five and hit the blade tool go ahead and cut that out click on it boom and I'm gonna drag the text over the generator there and you'll notice that i have like this cool little intro to my video file all right so another cool thing you can do so i have these blobs right here i'm going to take this and i'm going to add it on top of my timeline and you'll notice that it overtakes my entire video footage so i'm going to click on the generator here and i'm going to come up here to the parameters and i'm going to take the opacity way down i'm going to take it down to about 10% right here. So now you notice I have this cool little blob effect to my footage. Kind of looks like some bokeh or lens flare or something. So you can do that with all the different generators. So if I wanted to add, let's say, the, how about these bubbles? I just drag that over the top of my clip and then just turn the opacity way down. About right there. Then when I play my clip, Notice I have like these little floating bubbles or whatever. Um, so it's just something you may not, may not need for your project, but it's in there if you want to use it. And just make sure anytime you're doing anything in Final Cut that everything matches up on your timeline. You want everything perfectly even. Um, so like if you drag in, say, one of these organic, uh, let's go with this organic background. Just go ahead and stretch that so that it covers the entire clip. And then I can just adjust the opacity here and put that way down about right here and then when I hit play you know I've got this organic background like this paper background look or whatever I would never use that but uh, it's there it's basically uh, a generator you can use that two different ways um, you have third-party plugins so another thing I wanted to mention mine may look a little bit different because I have a lot of third-party plugins installed or whatever so some of these things are not going to show up in yours but you do have the solids and some of these basic generators like beam and clouds or whatever you will have those in your Final Cut Pro 10 library. All right, so if you want to add a transition, let me show you transition. So I got my clip here, and I want to transition from one clip to the next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here, and I'm just going to end the footage here. And I'm going to delete that portion. Then I'm going to add a different clip. Let's add this drone footage here. So you'll notice that I have two different clips. I have this building, and it transitions to this water. So I'm going to come up here on... And go ahead and close the inspector down. So the transition icon is right here. It looks like the two triangles touching each other. You can click on this. You have a ton of different transitions in here. Now, again, I do have some third-party plugins installed, so it may look a little bit different. But uh, like the cross dissolve is probably the most used transition, probably the most overused transition. You just drag it to your clip like this. It'll ask you, do you want to create it? Go ahead and tap yes. And then now I have a transition from one clip to the next. So when I play it, there's a city building and it transitions right here. You'll notice that it cross dissolved to this next video clip. I'll go ahead and delete that. And you have some different ones that you can play with. You have dissolves, you have lights, which are really cool. Uh, movements, if you want to do like a black hole or color planes, this is really cool right here. Let's just drag that there and I play it. I got the buildings here, the transition now. It kind of did this little funky like. Uh, glitch colorful transition from one clip to the next uh, you have some objects in here arrows you can kind of scrub on them too and it'll kind of give you an example of what the transition looks like so you can pick and choose the cube looks really cool the curtains are kind of neat uh, squares so i mean there's some nice ones that come uh, pre-installed with final cut pro 10 so you also have some effects that you can look in the effects browser right here so you have some video and audio effects so some of the video effects right here, let me show you. Uh, so I have some basic uh, clips. So right here, 
We've got, uh, let's go with, let me find something cool. How about, let's colorize, no, let's make a sepia tone. So I'll click on this. I'm just going to drag it right on top of my clip here. And you'll notice that it changed the color from sepia, from the original shot to the sepia look. And you can adjust this. You can go into the inspector. So you can adjust the parameters of the different effects or whatever. So let's go ahead and turn sepia off and find a different one that looks cool. Uh, what about distortion right here? Let's go with, okay, let's add this earthquake footage right here. Let's tap it and play it. And you'll notice that like now my clip is shaking or whatever. So it's kind of cool. And then you can adjust the amount, the layers, etc. And we'll just toggle that off for now. Let's see what else we have in here. Uh, light. So if you want to add some cool, like here's a bokeh effect right here. Just drag that right on top of the timeline. And when I play it, you notice it has this cool little bokeh effect to my clip now. Pause that. And I can adjust the amount. You can do circles or hexagons. Uh, you can do the size if you want to make them bigger or smaller. A number of them. So if you want to add like a large amount or if you just want to do minimal effect, you can do the pattern. Adjust like the pattern the speed, the blur amount, and then of course the opacity. So if you want to go like full opacity or whatever, you can adjust all these. And you can do this for each of the generators. Now you also have some audio effects in here. I'm not going to get too much into this on this basic editing video, but I'm going to dedicate a whole section for editing audio and Final Cut Pro 10 on a later video. But just know you have some different effects in here that you can add to your audio. All right, so this is the basic uh, editing in Final Cut Pro 10 just to get you started. In my next video, I'll show you how to export to either YouTube, to Vimeo, or if you just want to export your video or your file to your desktop, I'll show you that as well. I'll show you some settings that you need to set up um, in order to export to YouTube to get the best quality content. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave that below. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific day.